This is the COIN one year overview reading for the year 2023. Uh, it's currently October 17th, 2022, 11.44 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the overall theme and behavior for uh, the year for COIN, we have sideways rotation along key support uh, on a one year chart. We rise, meet the nearest resistance or meet a, uh, a critical resistance, and then we come back down and start rotating along support again. Um, it's crossed with uh, an oops, profit taking from an overbought um, crest or peak. So there's a significant, um, and it looks like it's it's the, the the selling from the overbought crest or peak um, is somehow tied into the lows of the year. And what I'm picking up on are two lows. So most likely the lows for the year towards the end of something towards the end of July um, and again uh, in early November. And then there's some other places where we're likely to have lows, but like prominent troughs, but not the lowest lows. This, these are where we're likely to have the lowest lows, likely to. We might have them at these other locations, but that's what it's, it's, it seems like to me. Um, there's also a low, a year, a prominent trough for the year in February within close time proximity to the month's high for February. Um, and then there's also low correlations in June. Um, and it looks like the month's June's high uh, is in close time proximity to to the year, the uh, prominent trough for the year. Looks like it's towards the end of the year, or towards the end of the month there for June. Uh, behavior around the high highs for the year, we have selling. It's a significant amount of selling, a, a sharp decline um, that offers an opportunity to open up a long position, um, and that's that's going to stand out on a one year chart at least. Um, behavior around the low, out of a, out of a decline, there's a fast sudden move higher marking the end of that period of decline. Um, it looks like there's quite a bit of um, price movement out of the low when we have the fast sudden move higher marking the end of the period of decline. There's a significant move higher there. Um, most likely we have the year's high in January. That's the most likely location to, to see the year's high. Um, some other probable places where we'll see, we'll, we'll, we're likely to see um, uh, like a prominent crest for the year, but not the highest high. Um, it could be where the highest high is, but most likely these are just prominent crests. Um, like in May to late May, again in September to late September, um, October and November, they're all uh, prominent crests in there. My sense is that My sense is that we have, um, we see the high twice. We see the high in January, we see it again in uh, March. Um, it's a critical price level at that point because we've met it before. And then we fall there, there's like a prominent trough there for the year in February near the, the February month's high. Close time, time proximity. All right, so let's get into it guys. Um, in January, we have a decline. Um, it's a notable decline. It's probably more than just coin. It's like a, like a global decline in early January there. Um, and there's a correlation to a important support level uh, as highlighted um, by the orange and the correlation to the theme card. So there's a significant support level that's highlighted in there in the midst of that decline. Um, and the, the behavior into the low, there's a, there's a notable decline. It'll stand out on at least a, a one month chart for January. Um, there's a notable decline that offers an opportunity to open up a long position. It looks like towards the end of the month, we have a significant move higher, pushing the upper end of a range higher. Um, and there's a notable rally that would stand out on at least a one month chart for January. Um, 
to, to reach the high, a no, notable rally, and that notable rally will um, will offer an opportunity to open up a short position. There's a swing trade opportunity uh, both at the low in January um, and then at the high in January, so notable amount of move a price differentiation there. Um, in February, the rally, the, the high is very likely at the end of January. This first high is likely at the very end of January because we have these, the Ace of Wands and the Princess of Wands here. They're very, very similar energies. They both are correlated to Victory and Chariot. Um, so likely there's a, there's a correlation to a high there. Um, or likely there's a, correlate, there's, a, there's a high correlator here, um, like early, early February, like on the cusp of January, February, we have a year's high most likely. Um, and there's a swing trade opportunity there at the high, and it looks like also in early uh, February. It could be the January high and early February, the same trade opportunity. Um, and then we have a, a significant trough in February that's within close proximity to the February month's high. It looks like the um, year's high in early February is also within close proximity time-wise to um, February's month's low. There's also a correlation there towards the end of the month near a bottom, uh, February bottom, um, to a significant price level, a significant support level, so we probably tap it again. Um, behavior around the high, uh, in the February uh, month's high, uh, there's an opportunity in the midst of volatility position oneself for both directions. So the February high marks a good mean part, uh, mean point uh, for like opening up a straddle or strangle, uh, utilizing option strategies. Um, when we have sideways fluidity along uh, a key support level in in late February, sideways fluidity, equal amounts of bulls and bears inflow and outflow. Uh, usually. The period of time represented by the change card it's there's a lot of price movement but you end up at roughly the same price level that you started at um, early may we have a swing trade opportunity as well. oh excuse me and there's also a there's also a swing trade opportunity around the um low in february because we're revisiting well, not necessarily, but we're revisiting a support level in the midst of a, sh a sharp dip that stands out on a one-month chart um, that takes and it takes place within a period of uh, sideways rotation. Um, that sharp dip takes us to a previous support level that was recently a past opportunity. So, uh, so, and by recently on a one-year chart, we're talking like roughly three to six months. Um, usually closer, but within that range. Okay, so uh, in, in early May, Early May, we have a significant, a significant price level, um, a significant price level in early May uh, near the, the completion of a rally. We have a swing trade opportunity there, um, and there's also a, um, a another probable location for a month's high here is at the high of May. Um, <laughs> there's a swing trade opportunity at the high of May involving the completion of a rally. Um, and there's also a swing trade opportunity in early May involving the, swing, the completion of a rally. So it could be that they're the same opportunity and that we have the high in early May, most likely. But um, we fall pretty hard from the, from the fall pretty hard from the May high, um, and there's a U-shaped dip forming the low for, uh, for, for May, excuse me, for March. Um, also around the second week of March, uh, around the bottom, there's um, a significant rally higher that will stand out on at least the one month chart. around like the second the cusp of the second to third week of, of uh, March um, there's actually there's a resistance level there uh, that's highlighted as well that's on at least a one month chart um, 
um, and then a critical price level in, in late um, March highlighted as well. Um, that's the type of uh, card, the science card is a uh, significant technical price level. <coughs> Usually comes in handy to notate what that price level is. So around around March there'll be an uh, important price level that stands out. Um, it'll be it'll be notable. We'll know which one it is, um, and that'd be something to highlight. In um, in early April, we have uh, support a period of sideways rotation along a support level. Um, at least in the first week. Sorry guys, I just picked up on something in the end of January that pushed to the upside to push the upper end of a range higher in, in the later part of January. That's most likely a breakout, like a significant breakout on a one year chart. All right, so um, there's a decline that starts around the first week. Yeah, I'm advised to open up some protection around the first week. Um, at a support level, there's a fast sudden move higher mark in the end of a period of sideways rotation. Um, and the behavior around the, the month's high in April is uh, sideways, excuse me, bullish price swings. There's a swing trade opportunity involving the completion of a rally there around the, the uh, April's high as well. Um, towards the end of the month of April, we have multiple fail attempts to break through key resistance. There's also, um, I'm picking up on an agreement between two leaders or merger or acquisition of some kind that's highlighted in both uh, March and April. Uh, possibly the same decision highlighted again um, in September and November. All right, so back to back to April. Um, the behavior uh, into the low, guys, for April, we have the halting of a bullish trend marked by a sharp decline through key support level, and that's on this, the, the scale of a one-year chart. Um, May, we have another prominent crest for the year. There's an, there, there, in early May, there's a trade opportunity involving a breakout on at least a one-month chart. Um, and there's also a rally there in early May that um, increases with momentum moving forward in time. It looks like um, it looks like we move we rally into the end of May where we see the May high. Um, it's a significant move higher. Interesting. Okay, so um, in in late May we sell from uh, we excuse me we have a, a notable move higher to reach a prominent crest for the year towards the end of the month of May, um, and it's that move higher is out of um, oversold territory or possibly to fill a previous gap down, um, a short squeeze or something like that. I don't think it's a short squeeze in this case, but I'm also advised to be cautious around the May uh, low multiple fill um, or multiple. Multiple false bottoms. Um, and there's a notable decline off of the May high uh, that increases with the momentum moving forward in time. It looks like probably into June, June that decline continues. We revisit a past, uh, some past problems in early June and um, fall through a key support level that we recently had already broken, fall, fallen through once before. Um, and again, on the scale, recently on the scale of one year charts, roughly three to six months in within that time frame, closer to three usually. Um, the, the low for Ju uh, June uh, it forms after a notable decline on a one month chart, at least, but most likely on a one year chart. Um, and we have another prominent low there um, towards the end of, um, we have a prominent low towards the end of June prominent low for the year towards the end of June. It's in close proximity to the um, the month's high for June as well. Um, it looks like there's a, there, the month's high, uh, it, it, it's um, 
the months high, we moved significantly higher towards the end of the month, even in the face of seemingly overwhelming headwinds. Um, and in the midst of that move higher, I'm advised to open up some protection um, because uh, it looks like we go even we go lower the following month in July. Um, Unicursal in July around the high, there's a fake out, shake out, intentional um, misdirection of some kind. Um, it looks like a big move higher, fast sudden move higher that will um, make it seem like we're going higher. Um, but then there's a, there's a significant amount of price change to the downside um, off of the high of off of the high of um, July, the, the uh, month side of July. Um, it looks like we probably. Okay, so out of June, we, we're, we're rallying in, into July. We hit a critical resistance level in July. Um, looks like there's a there's a breakout through that critical resistance level and a swing trade opportunity in the midst of that involving that breakout um, with a, a July a month's high, uh, offering some significant misdirection that would stand out on the one year um, as a notable point of misdirection. Um, and likely it's a fast sudden move higher in the midst of like a, a f false breakout and then we f we sell towards the end of the month significantly from the from that month of july's high um down to a m what's most likely the year's low here in in late july uh selling from a crest um selling from a, a near overbought crest or peak down to a low for the for the year um, it looks like the low forms after a failed attempt to break through key resistance followed by a decline th through key support. So around around the high, it looks like we probably looks like we're breaking through the resistance. We might break out s temporarily, but then we come back down through and we, we, we fall to the low in the late part of the month. Yeah, there's a lot of movement to reach that low. So in August, we have three crisscrosses back and forth through the same price level in early August, uh, marking, uh, confirming a bullish trend. We also have a trade offer, swing trade opportunity in early August involving the completion of the bullish trend. Um, and there's a notable move. It'll stand out on a one-year chart. Uh, notable move off of the high. Um, looks like months high in okay so there's a notable rally in, in August August is mostly rally out of the low we have a notable move uh, higher along a diagonal trend line breaking through horizontal resistance to meet a secondary resistance and then we fall back to somewhere between those price levels and that's the behavior around the, the months low August, early August, through crisscrosses back and forth through the same price level, confirming a bullish trend um, and a notable move. Like uh, a lot of ground is covered. Um, looks like we probably have the high, uh, the August high in early is the same high as the early September high. Excuse me, it's not necessarily an early, it's more like a late September high. Okay, so let me back up. So we moved significantly higher, and there's a month's high uh, for August towards the uh, third or fourth week. Um, a male ruler is highlighted uh, in late August as well. And then there's a ca there's a cash in opportunity or a cash out opportunity, I should say, on a position a swing trade position in early September. Um, looks like the rally probably continued into September, into late September, where we have um, a year's high again. This is most likely prominent highs for the year, not the highest high, but prominent highs that would stand out. Um, and in the third, roughly the third to fourth week I'm of the month of um, September, I'm advised to open up some protection. Uh, there's sideways, uh, there's sideways fluctuations with a bearish trend preceding a rally in, in late. Um, 
late September, and we're ra we're bound by a range around the, the month's low of September, um, so we don't go deeper than a previous low. And there's a notable reversal. It'll stand out on a one uh, one year chart. There's a notable reversal around the one the high for the month of September, which is also very likely um, a very prominent high for the year. We attempt to establish or reestablish support um, at a lower level um, in October, early October. There's um, correlation to a significant support level again there. Interesting. <clears throat> um, there's sideways rotation along the key support around the month's low of October, and that increases with uh, bearish momentum as we move forward in time. Um, the, the, the month's high of October, it, it's likely a higher high than we had in, a higher high or the same high that we had in um, September. And then we, we revisit that crest there um, around the high there in October in the midst of some erratic behavior back up forth through the same price level. And then in late October, we have a decline to and through support level followed by a, a sideways rotation along key support. There's a swing trade opportunity around the, the October months low uh, offering, uh, and it involves a completion of a trend of a bullish trend on at least a one month chart. Um, and then it looks like we decline into a significant, oh, excuse me, let's see. So there's there's another high here. Um, there's another high here in, uh, in November, a prominent high for the year in November uh, that forms where we have a, fa a, a big move higher that's followed by another, a full retracement of that move shortly thereafter. And it'd stand out on a, a one year chart. Um, notable decline in early, Looks like out of late October into early November, there's a notable decline um, and selling from a uh, near overbought crest or peak down to a, a year's low. And that's probably the second year's low there that we see. Um, probably the same low as the one in July. If it's not, then it's likely lower, but most likely it's the same low. The high and the low for the month of, of November are within close proximity to each other on the timeline. Um, we also have quite a few um, headwinds uh, putting pressure on on the uh, on shares of corn in late November, and there'll be a point where there's like a critical resistance, and we just keep like doing this jagged behavior below it. Um, uh, it looks like Congress is highlighted in late December, they're selling around the high of the month's high of December, they're selling from overbought crest or peak. I left out there's a, pro a likelihood of a prominent crest or high again for the year in November. Um, and then uh, we sell from a, a crest or peak down to and through a support level and then we do a U-shape reversal below the support level and, re and then come back and reuse that support level as support. Um, that's a technical behavior around the month's high of December. Uh, behavior around the month's low for December, we have a period of volatility that ends with a fast sudden move to the upside. It looks like that fast sudden move to the upside is towards the end of the month of November, or December, excuse me. So like we have the low for December in late December. And there's a notable move higher, a standout on a one-year one, a one -year chart, um, reaching for a distant resistance level. The following year for coin for 2024, the sneak preview card is significantly bullish, guys. Um, I would be buying on the lows. I'd be buying on the dips here. So my trade, my trade plan. These have got to be some significant um, declines off of the highs of the year, because they offer opportunities to open up long positions, and it's coming from the highs. So they got to be notable moves down. Anyhow, so. 
I'd be looking to open a long position um, around the low of January, sell that long position, excuse me, open up a short position, not sell the long position, but open up a short position in early February um, around a critical resistance level where there's volatility around the high for February. We'll attempt to establish support for February. Um, and I want to position myself so that I already have the calls we bought around the low of January. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll buy puts in early February around that price level. <coughs> and then I'll have both directions covered. trade opportunity in, in May, um, looks like I, or excuse me, in March, I want to sell the, the long position that I opened in, Ju in January, I'd like to sell it around the high in March, um, and it looks like very likely that high takes place early in the month rather than, well, no, late in the month. Actually, it's not so late in the month, it's more early in the month. Yeah, it's more early in the month. I'm going to want to close out of that long position. I'll still be holding a short position. Matter of fact, I likely sell the short position. Here, here's what's going on. I likely sell the short position that I opened in February, in May, in early May, and sell the long position in late May. Uh, sorry, early March, and sell the long position in late March. See where the other best trades are looking. Okay, I'd want to open up long positions. I want to open up long, long term long positions like to hold throughout like 2024 or into 24, 24, I should say. I want to open those around July. Um, and November and uh, likely early November. Good opportunity to cash out of those long positions. Um, if you want, if you don't want to hold them over, would be um, around the high in September. And again, there's a, another high somewhere around November. But in, in the case of that, I'd probably wait till 2024 if I waited till November. Um, all right, guys, that's the overview for coin throughout the year of 2023. Let me know what you think by hitting that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Most importantly, my friends, make sure you follow that rule of karma. The world needs you. Every time you do something good for the world, it is multiplied. And there's plenty of people out there that are doing things that aren't so good for the world. So it's our responsibility as conscious individuals to do good. So pay a little bit of it forward. Follow that rule of karma, my friends. It'll, it'll pay dividends in the long run. Pay a little forward, pay a little bit back to the channel because we do need your support, my friends. And make sure whatever you spend that money out, you're spending, you're spending it out of love. Don't cop out and say, oh, I need to do this. It doesn't feel right. Be courageous. Do what's right in the universe will open up doors you didn't know existed. Spend that money out of love and the universe is going to send it back to you tenfold in all directions, my friends. I'll see you on the next one.